Hi, it's Jill with Quick Flix. And the project I'm working on today is going to be for Frozen. And it is a bunch of centerpieces. Um, I'm going to show you a couple things that I'm doing that I've not done before. I did a video a while ago, or a while back, I don't remember what it was, that um, I had used a miniature popcorn box as the base for my mirror image. However, um, this particular one wanted purple and blue to go with Elsa and Anna. So what I did is made the box, and I'm going to show you in just a second. I'm going to put together first my... Here it is, two foot. I have too much stuff on my desk now. Now I'm, I'm starting to get antsy. So I might have to quit and do this video in a few shots. Um, Diane, this is addressed to you. I got your message. I went in and did another YouTube video or a, a screen video showing you how to put your writing in your box on your bookmark. I know you're watching this. And after I did it, it would not let me save it. I don't know if it was too long. Sometimes it, it, it just, that program just doesn't work. And right now, I apologize, but I am extremely, extremely busy. So I have got to put priority on my orders right now. And I'm so sorry, but I don't have time to redo it because I have got to get these, I've got, I've, I've got stuff I've got to get done. It, it would be a little bit different if I didn't have my grandkids all day long, but I only work at night and on the weekends. And this weekend is Charlie's birthday party, and I have church, and I just, you know, the door, the days keep getting shorter for me. The older I get, the busier I get, and, and the shor shorter my days are getting. So I'm going to try and explain it to you. Um, and if I get a chance, I will add it to this video, but I'm not going to make any promises because I just, like I said, I don't think I have the time. I'm putting together the Elsa is the two foot. Um, she is cut in sections. This section here is cut in one piece, and then her train is cut in another piece. And I add tool, tool to her dress which let me grab the tool do i want to use this one or do i want to use this one whoa 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 too much stuff and i almost knocked it over i think i'm going to use this one here it's the glitter tool that is so messy to work with um but oh yeah let me put this together i'm, I'm all over the place um let me see here we go and a little update for, um, I don't know if I've given any updates over the holidays and stuff, what all's been going on with Kendall and in the family. Um, Amy, as everyone probably knows, it's friends with me on Facebook, and I've already mentioned it in other videos, is expecting. And she's now 20 weeks, so she's halfway there, and so far everything's gone go going great. Uh, she does have to go in weekly for a progestin, progesterone injection in her tummy um, because she's high risk. And uh, she had her first two were preemies. And so with this one, they, they do, they're watching her. Um, and on one of my videos, I, we went, I went with her, I've been with her to most of the ultrasounds. She has to have an ultrasound every other week and she has to have the shots every week. So she spends a lot of time at the doctor, but I went with her last time and I was so sure we were gonna find out the gender. But since we were there for a different reason, the, the technician, of course, isn't gonna take the time to try and get the baby to scoot around so that they could figure out what gender it was. So Monday, she has an appointment and Monday, they said that yes, they would be spending the time to find the gender, uh, pro providing the baby still not breech, which um, he or she better not be. I'm gonna have to go in there and, and kinda move her around myself 
I tell you, I, I don't know why. Um, I just am so excited to know the gender of this one. I have no idea why, but I do. I want to know what it is. And Jen, Jen and Andrew are doing three weeks. We don't know what that one is either. I think I'm getting two new grandsons. There we have Elsa. And what I'm going to do... Oh, now. Oh, I put it on already before I put the rest of the... Well, that's okay. I'm not going to do it on this one. I'll put it on last. Um, I've done this before with the two also. This isn't something new. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to get two new grandsons. Um, not because of any indicators. Um, I'm never right. I've never been right. So uh, this I, I'm due to be right once. But I think they're both having boys. And Charlie, Amy's little girl, is positive she's having a little sister. So she talks about her new little sister constantly. That little girl is going to be the best big sister. She is so excited. Um, Amy takes care of her, actually, my other daughter's sister-in-law's, brother-in-law's, has a three-month-old little girl, and Amy um, takes care of her now. And so, I think I might have mentioned this in my last video. I don't know. But if I'm repeating myself, I'm sorry. But when, when she started taking care of her was the week that that Charlie and Wyatt were coming back from spending a week on vacation with their dad. So they did not know that they had this new baby. So when Amy, or when they got back from their vacation and were dropped off on Monday at the house, they found this baby, Brindley, there. And uh, I'm sure because Charlie's just so young, um, all babies look alike to her. She didn't know that it was baby Brindley. She thought it was her new baby sister. She swore her baby sister came while she was gone. And so she just kept calling her her baby sister all day. Well, at night, when Mommy and Daddy came to pick her up, Charlie had a total meltdown. Absolute meltdown because they were taking her baby sister home and she was not having it. She cried for 20 minutes. Dom, that she wanted her baby sister back. And it was on a Friday, so it wasn't even like they were going to be back the next day. But I think now she's got it figured out that that's, that her baby is still in her mommy's tummy. But she is extremely, extremely excited. And um, her new, which will be half-sister, or stepsister, is 12. And she is well. And, the, and, and Doug's little boy is 8. No, he's going to be nine. He just turning nine. But they are all so excited with the onset of having a new sibling. They just in just super super excited. So it's pretty cool to watch the the excitement these kids are going through. Um, and let me see what else is new. Kendall's doing superb. Um, She's doing really, really, really good. She had that bout where she got really sick right before we went on our vacation, but she's been doing great since, and uh, God's been taking good care of her. She's doing really good. The only thing they had, she had fallen asleep the other day before she had taken her chemo, and so Mommy and Daddy woke her up to take it, and she sat up in bed and, and took her pill and went back to sleep. Well, these chemo pills, you're, they can't touch. Um, the only person that can touch them is the person that is taking them, which would be Kendall, because they're so toxic. And you have to use rubber gloves when you take them. Well, Kendall took the pill and they said, you know, did, did you, you know, did you swell? And she said, yeah, well, she was exhausted. And she went back to sleep. Well, everything was all fine and dandy. However, in the morning, Isabel went in to Kendall's room, um, as she always does, just to make sure she's up and getting ready for school. Isabel is two. So she comes to her mommy in the kitchen, and she's got half of a pill. And she said to mommy, I found some candy. And Isabel ate half of the chemo pill. 
Well, of course, my, my um, brother-in-law, or my son-in-law and my daughter absolutely freaked out and called the hospital and poison center and and um, they told them what you know to watch you know that they're sure because it was only a half of a one that it wasn't going to be a problem however it still is not something you take lightly because that stuff is so and you're talking a two-year-old taking half of a pill of a seven-year-old's dose but um everything seems to be fine however my daughter you know, she still can't get it out of her head because the effects of chemo long term are more concerning than the short term. Uh, but anyway, it put her right over the edge. And to top it off, my um, son-in-law, they, they've had a lot on their plate, but now that it's been one year, they're at the one year celebration one year mark, I wouldn't call it celebration, one year celebrating she's she's been in remission. However, it's also one year ago that they that all of this started. So they're having what do they call it? Um, PSD PTS post syndrome PSD PSD. Um, and my son in law the other night, my daughter woke up to a crash and ran and found my son-in-law collapsed on the floor. And she had to call an ambulance. Um, he started thrashing and of course the kids woke up because he was screaming. And um, I believe my daughter started screaming. And you know, they called an ambulance and came and got, you know, they came and got him and took him in and what it, it turned out to be is just uh, all the stress, everything going on, his, you know, they have a black lab that they've had since before they got married that's got diabetes and his health is not good and he was taking her in today because he said he's going to have to have her put to sleep and one thing after another with him, God bless him, it's just one thing after another, that's my husband calling, I'll call him back, but um, anyway, uh, that's what it turned out is from the stress. He's been trying to do so much and around the house and with Kendall and just everything that health-wise they said he's got to stop. He just has to stop everything. He'd been painting and putting crown molding in and putting wainscoting. I think what was happening is he was feeling like the busier he kept himself, the more he, the less he thought about everything and it it didn't work that way um so anyway he's fine he's at home um everything's good he did he did make a promise that he was going to quit doing all these projects and just concentrate on his family now and let everything else go they went to the vet today for the for the dog they said the dog is in excellent condition they're not going to have to have her put down i know he's relieved about that and there we go i'm going to put some in her hair um so all in all, everything is turning out good. Uh, but you know, it's it's been a rough, it's been a rough road for them, to say the least. But I told I tell all of my kids, you have to take everything that happens and find something that good that comes out of it. It's the only thing that can get you through some of the bad things in life is just to find something, something good because almost everything, even my, my daughter's horrific divorce, good came out of it. So we have to remind ourselves that as bad as it was, if there are some positive notes. Not gonna get into those, but I tell everybody in general in life, you gotta try and stay as positive as you can because you know, you don't realize how fortunate we are in the world that we live and how less fortunate so many people are and I'm not talking financially I'm talking health wise and 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 everything it just it's we need to count our blessings and if somebody is down and out I decided I've, I've been working on my grandkids trying to make them conscientiously say something nice and do something nice for somebody every single day and 
they get in the car, it was four and Kendall was seven, and they go through what they did that day, kind for somebody. And I ask them, you know, like, how did it make you feel that you did that? And they, they are reaping the benefits of how good they feel when they've done something kind and said something kind to somebody. Because I tell you what, I cannot believe the amount of mean people there are out there. Oh, my husband's calling again. I'm going to go ahead and pause this. This is apparently an important call. I'll be back. Hello, I'm back again. I had to answer his call because um, I knew he was just going to keep calling back. He wanted to know if he could bring me anything. He went out to grab a bite to eat and I told him to go out to eat and call me before you leave to see if I want something. But I don't. I don't want anything. I, you know, you just, just don't. What did I do? What was I working on? This color glitter. I'm trying to finish her up here and I'm just going to add some glitter up here to the top of her dress and then I'm going to show you what I did for the boxes. I did all of the, um, no I didn't do all the characters, I did Olaf, um, Anna, and Elsa, and this order is also going to have uh, uh, face prop or photo props, really cute. I will video that as well. Um, and I will say of all the characters that I do, I think that Elsa's the hardest. She is really, I'm putting the, the tool on it. I love it. I love the look, but it isn't easy. This would not be something I would recommend to anybody as a first project, but there we have Elsa. I will take a picture of these when I get them done. I think I've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, probably 20 centerpieces. They're all over my office. Um, the thing that I did here for my mirrors, I have here Anna, and what I did on the mirrors is I said I used the, the little popcorn boxes that I did on the, on the other ones, the first ones I did with the little tiny four and a half inch popcorn box, but I wanted this one bigger. So I took from the bags, tags, boxes, and more Cricut cartridge, did a screen print so I could do it in the Cameo, and I made purple ones and I made blue ones. I picked up the purple that's in the flower on her dress or in her cape, like on this piece. I used my eyedropper to pick, to match that with her cape. And then the blue I took out of Elsa's dress. So I made three pink and three blue for these boxes. Then what I did is I have a digital, um, digital paper that I got off of Etsy and all, all you would have to do is type in digital, digital frozen and the papers, digital paper frozen or frozen paper or digital clip art, whatever. But I don't remember how I did it and I don't know who the vendor was and I'm not going to look it up. I don't have time. Um, but again, if you do a search, it'll bring so many up that you have so much to choose from. But I forgot one thing that I was going to show you on this. I don't want to put it on her until she's all dry. I'm just going to show you. This was a Christmas ornament from last year that I got, like for a dime at Hobby Lobby. I used them in her hand, holding the snowflake. Um, but this one hasn't got her tool and stuff on it. I should have done all that before I put the... And this was a different snowflake. This one is flat, uh, but it's a plastic. And again, another one those that I got on sale. And I will take pictures when I get these all done so you can see the whole group. And then when I did the boxes, I did an inner inside offset on the box. First of all, what I did is I took the box itself and with my knife, this one is serrated because I used my, my serrated line here for my folds. But I took the knife and this had a scallop along the edge, along the top. Again, it's from bags, takes, boxes, and more with Cricut. And it had a scallop top. I took my knife and I cut the top off on the boxes because I wanted them flat. Because they're going to sit like this. Then what I did is I did my perforated, that's what I wanted to see, my perforated lines for all my folds. Then I centered by, by, by putting a cross on one of the boxes, centered it to do my punch 
for the, the peg. So when these are put together, the peg is going to go down in this hole because this is going to be the base for the mirror. And then what I did is I went in and I did an internal offset about a, a quarter of an inch or a little bit more of a quarter of an inch on the box. And I cut those separately. It made the box a little firmer. And I colored them using the digital prints from the, um, the digital papers I have. Then I didn't cut out yet. Oh, got it. I haven't cut it out. Shoot. I have to cut out. This is going to have to be another section because I've got the glitter Cinderella mirror that I'm going to put here on the box. And I've got a circle that come, came out of the center of the box that's going to go in here that says happy birthday. I'm going to come back. I'm going to print those out and get that ready so I can assemble and show you uh, a couple of these done. So I'll be back with part three of this same video. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, I'm back for round three. <clears throat> Let me see if I can adjust this a little bit. Somebody said they can't see my works <clears throat> area that well. Okay. Alrighty, hopefully this will be not anywhere near done with the pieces, but I'm not going to film everything. I was showing you how I did these boxes. Um, here's the blue one. And then all I did was cut out some of the digital prints and added them to the box. I'm going to do a blue one and I'm going to do a purple one. There we go. And oh, I think I might be getting a cold. I think I might be getting a cold. Oh, let's see here. There we go. I'm kind of going back and forth here because I've laid them all out on one sheet that I cut out. And they're a little bit different in shape. Um, I can tell by looking at them where they go. I don't know why that is because it wasn't anything that I did. By gosh. No, I am definitely getting a cold. Which is a funny story. My, um... Da <laughs> my daughter Amy text her ex to today to let him know that Charlie um, has a cold and wasn't feeling very well. And so he writes her back and tells her, her gives her this long um, outline of proper hygienic care that uh, she should be providing for the children because she does daycare. Well, she takes care of a three-month-old little girl and she takes care of an 18-month-old little boy. Um, Charlie and Wyatt get sick constantly since birth and the doctors had said one of the reasons that he gets, they get sick so often is because they're preemies and Preemies just have a tendency to get sick more often. Um, but for whatever reason, they get, you know, your normal colds and things like that. But um, he proceeded to give her a whole outline of washing hands and using disinfectants and what should be used around the house to clean and everything. Which, the reason I'm laughing is because um, my daughter is, is a neat freak and has, oh, I'm missing some pieces, is, is forever cleaning and, and, and um, she's a neat freak and he, they were married, he, he knows that, but he's always got to have his two cents, even after the divorce, he still wants to try and do what he can to run or ruin her life, but um, she had sent him back a thing about illnesses and what to expect when your kids are of school age. And but it wasn't a it was it was not a government site. So he writes her back about not being a government site. It was just just hilarious uh, because I always said with my all of my kids, when your kids start school, you will find they're 
constantly sick because they share everything at school. Now, not even the schools can keep every toy and every pencil and everything a kid touches st sterilized because it just doesn't happen. And our, my granddaughter that has leukemia, they don't even have those expectations for her because it's just not feasible. But I thought it was pretty humorous um, that he was going to pursue other avenues if the kids proceeded to get colds. And he claims to be a uh, walking encyclopedia. But um, I don't know if anybody else would think that was humorous, but I think it's pretty funny. Not well funny at the time when she told me. I was infuriated. But after I got over being mad, then I had to, I couldn't do anything else but laugh because it's a joke that anybody would even say that. I said it's a desperate individual, I guess. I'm going to do the pink one first. Now, these are going to be turned this way when I assemble them. This is how they're going to go. This box pattern is awesome. And then this will all be taped together. However, I'm not going to tape them because I've got to have them flat for shipping. I wonder if I tape this. That could be taped. You know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to tape with my tacky tape tacky tape and tape this one shut. My tacky tape started to come off the spool which isn't cool because this stuff is not cheap. Not cheap. There we go. And but this stuff is the best when you're making boxes or trying to hold together this type of thing there. It is the best tape. Oh, boy, that just scared me. And Sheila, you just sent me a photo. I'm in the middle of fil filming, Sheila. So uh, look at your picture shortly. And Diane, I mentioned in one of the other videos, I tried to do that tape, that video for you on the wording. I haven't done it yet. Again, if you had a clue how busy I am, um, it's, it's, actually, you know what I could even do with these? I could glue these shut. I wouldn't even have to use tape. I could just glue them. Listen to me. Let me see if they fold once I tape them shut. Because that would not be cool if it didn't fold. would have no way of shipping them. And yeah, they fold fine. Yep, 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 yep. Perfect. Then I'm just going to put the... That's perfect. Yes, I'm going to glue them shut or tape them shut or whatever. So all they have to be is opened up and shut like that. Now this part, I guess it wouldn't even have to be taped shut. Listen to me, you guys. I don't know why I'm talking about this. It doesn't matter. On the front here, though, is where I want... Um, the pink one, I have to recut the blue because it chopped the bottom off. But glitter paper to me is gold value. I do not throw glitter away. So I will keep these these mistakes. And I have a pile of, I have a pile of them. And then I will do a video on how to take a mistake and turn it around into a project. What I'm going to do with this one is glue it on because this is too, too many loopy loops for me to try and tape it. Um, my husband, when I had to hang up, oh, I told you he was calling to see if I wanted anything to eat. Well, I didn't want anything to eat. I wanted a large caramel frappe and it reminded me today when I went to pick the kids up from school. I get a caramel frappe from McDonald's almost every day. I love them, love them, love them. Um, I hadn't had one for a while, and for some reason, because I got my new coffee uh, gig, I've been drinking a lot of that, and on top of it, caramel frappe is not a good thing. A little bit much caffeine, caffeine. But today, I wanted one. So I was going, and I was driving through McDonald's, and Isabel started going, where are you going, Nama? I said, McDonald's. And she said, Car you get caramel frappe? This is my two-year-old. 
And I said, yep, getting a caramel frappe. Well, I drove through to get it, and when I asked for it, they came back to tell me that the machine was broken. And they said, would you like something else? And I'm like, no, doggone it. You know, and I laughed because, of course, I couldn't get my caramel frappe. Where I did the happy birthday, this is the center of, of this piece. Of course, it's not the center that was cut out in glitter. I save those in my pieces that one day I will use in something, some sort of genius work of art. I just cut them out of white, but what I do is use that pattern to cut the white center out. Anyway, um, when I couldn't get my caramel frappe, it, I'm like, oh shoot, you know that the, the machine was broken. And Isabel asked me why I didn't get my caramel frappe, and I said, the machine's broken. She said, why? And I said, I don't know why. They just said it's broken. Well, why? I don't know why. They just said it's broken. She kept saying, why? And I'm so, and I, and I kept saying, Isabel, I don't know why. The machine is broken. Well, why, Nama? Why is it broken? I said, I don't know. She, and she wasn't going to buy the, I don't know. So finally, I said to her, I said, it's broken because somebody hit it with a bat. And she said, oh, somebody hit it with a bat? And I said, yep, yeah, somebody hit it with a bat. She said, why? And, oh, man, she's not going to let this go. I said, I don't know why they hit it with the bat. Oh, they were, they, they were trying to hit the ball. And she said, they were trying to hit the ball with the bat, and they hit the caramel frappe? And I said, yep, yeah, that's right. Guess what her next question is? Why? So this went on and on. So I have decided that trying to just answer and give them anything will get them to be quiet. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. But she would repeat the whole thing. The caramel frappe machine's broken because they hit it with the bat because they were trying to hit the ball. And if you hear this coming out of a two-year-old, it, it was it, it was priceless. It was worth the aggravation of her asking me why again and again and again because it was so stinking cute. Why? Why? But um, then I want to pull the car over, crawl in the back seat, and just squeeze the snot out of her. She is the cutest thing. I said of the all the grandkids, she's the one that has me wrapped so tight around my her little finger, my little fingers, whatever that saying is. It's getting ready to fall off. What do I have that would be really cute to hang from here? I will come up with something, and I will take a picture. But this is what I used the box for. It's standing on a wood base. And then I'm going to put probably tool. I'm going to say it's going to be tool. But let me see. I am. I'm going to use tool on the wood base. And the wood stick, on the whatever. But I'm going to use blue instead of pink, and then I use pink on the blue. Genius, huh? I know you're all thinking what a genius. I know that's what you're thinking. And I am thinking I'm going to have to get up and make some tool bows. But I'm going to push it down a little bit so I don't cover up all of my blingy bling work there. And again, I will be taking some pictures, but here's what we have so far. It's not in the base where I want it. So there we go. And I will get Elsa done in the blue and get a few more of the pieces done. I've got Olaf, all, I've got a whole bunch of them sitting here. So I will get some done, take some pictures, get this uploaded. And then my next project is going to be the Lorex, uh, Dr. Seuss. And what else do I have to do? Oh, I don't even know. Oh, pictures did come in today, guys, um, for both of my, my dogs my daughters. Here's my one daughter, Amy. This is what she got me. Ordered, <laughs> ordered me for scrapbooking. No, this is my son and Jenna. Here's Amy's that she ordered me. This is what she ordered me for scrapbooking. I got maybe four pages here. But I gotta start somewhere. Ugh. So 
stinking rotten cute. Oh, look at that. There's my daughter and my little Charlie. And why, why giving mommy a kiss? And there's my daughter and Charlie. There's their their gingerbread houses. But anyway, I will get. I have now some pictures to work on, and I haven't even opened the ones for my other daughter. So let me see, because I think I can tell what. Oh, yeah, I knew it. She never does anything lightly. Oh, these are from Disney. Some of them. When Kendall went in and had the makeover. And she was so upset because she didn't have any hair. And so I found her that wig. But when we went back to get ready for trick-or-treating, Charlie got all dressed for trick-or-treating and she had her real hair. And Kendall was so upset because Charlie's hair, she said, looked better because hers was her real hair in a braid, that she took her whole outfit off and just cried because she wanted hair. Because she was, her hair had not grown back, or had not, well, it started, she had a little bit of fuzz. Um, but she was so, here she is taking her, her chemo. What a sport. She does everything on her own now, but she, that was such a heartbreaking moment with her crying because she didn't have hair. And here she is on Christmas with her hair is growing back in and she is such a doll. And Isabel, the why girl, why, 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 everything is why. Oh, they're my, my gems, they are just so beautiful. There they all are decorating the Christmas tree and Kendall's up there at the top ready to put the star on. She's actually going to be doing, um, she's going to be this uh, poster child or whatever it is for the Wish Found, uh, Make a Wish Foundation. Um, they're doing a whole spiel this next month I think it is and Kendall is going to be the um, child they picked for this year. So they're interviewing her on Monday with everything that she's been through with, with the leukemia. Um, there they all are in their matching jammies. I did a layout on that already. I'm gonna have some I'm gonna have some major fun doing these layouts. I did tell the girls not to make me too many because I get overwhelmed because this is only two months worth of photos and it's only on two of my kids. So got some work ahead of me guys. But anyway, I'm done with this one for tonight. So, talk to you later. Bye-bye.